GS Cadillac limousine, and today I'll show you the inside and the outside, and then take you for a drive. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, before we get to this DTS limousine, I'd like to uh, wish you all a Merry Christmas. I hope that you are all healthy and uh, being able to spend some time with uh, family during the holiday season. Um, I also want to thank those of you who have subscribed to the channel for subscribing. Uh, we have almost reached 1,000 subscribers on the channel and that's a huge milestone. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I hope that you guys are too. Uh, it's just kind of cool just to bring these car videos to so many people, so it's uh, really exciting to me. So anyways, once again, I have this 2010 DTS limousine. I uh, thought it'd be a fun car to bring to you guys, uh, especially since some of you already know we had a uh, 96 Fleetwood limousine on this channel. So it'll be a neat car to kind of compare to to see what has changed in the limousine world between uh, that car and this one. So without further ado, let's start with the review. So I'd like to start the review just by taking a look at the side of this vehicle. It's really where you can truly tell that this is a very big car. Uh, definitely not quite normal for a regular DTS, so obviously you can see where they made the stretch in the middle of the car. It's got this huge door on the side. I mean, it's absolutely gigantic, uh, big to move. Um, kind of neat though. It's kind of cool just to see such a big door on the side of this sedan, so I like to see that. Um, otherwise, it really isn't all that much different uh, from a regular DTS sedan. Uh, you know, you got most of the same stuff here, except you do have some chrome on the uh, pillars here on the B pillar and the C pillar. You also have some really nice chrome on the bottom of this car, just underneath the doors. So it's kind of a neat spot. It actually reminds me a little bit of that 96 uh, Fleetwood limousine that I brought to you guys because that had a chrome running along the entire bottom length of the car. Uh, so that's kind of similar to that. You also do have this nice line of chrome running along uh, all three doors of the car. So it really is tasteful. Um, they definitely did add a good amount of chrome, which I guess looks nice, makes the car stand out. And that's Kind of what you want with a limousine honestly but taking a look at the front of the dts there isn't too much anything special going on here although i do really like the huge cadillac logo on this car of course this is uh before cadillac got rid of the uh, uh wreath part of their emblem but it looks nice here uh, very large which i like um i do also like how you do have a cornering lamp on this car so whenever you make put on your turn signal at night uh, it'll light up on that side of the car wherever you're turning so it makes it easier to see uh, I believe all modern cars should have a cornering lamp It just makes it so much easier to see when you're turning uh, Especially when you have a big car like this uh, you definitely want to see where you're turning so you don't scrape the side of the car um, When you're making a big turn there isn't too much to uh, see up here um, But it is still a nice looking car definitely a little bit aged uh, for today's standards now taking a look at the corner of the DTS here of course there's a reflector here so people can see the side of the car at nighttime. It's kind of a safety feature and there's of course a light in there as well. But I didn't realize those lights in there are actually LEDs. I didn't realize that there were actually that many LED lights on this car and even on the front of it. So moving on towards the back of the car. Um, again, not too much here but I do want to point out the S&S badge uh, for, on this car. Uh, they're the ones who stretched this vehicle. Uh, they are now owned by AccuBuilt who did build the 96 fleet what I brought to you guys so kind of neat to sh that they have their badge there to uh, show it off um, you of course have your fuel filler door with a regular gas cap nothing uh, it's not capless unfortunately I wish it was that would be nice but I do also want to point out these nice chrome wheels they actually are pretty neat looking um, I do like how they are chrome so it stands out a little bit definitely fitting for this limousine now while we're looking at the side of the DTS something I did want to point out is that this does have a vinyl roof which uh, is not really a big surprise but something that's kind of strange about this one is that there doesn't seem to me be much padding underneath the roof. I mean, it's just really quite hard to the touch and not very soft. It seems like most other uh, cars that I've seen with vinyl tops have a nice padded roof. Just uh, even on limousines too, on the 96 limousine it had more padding. This one's just kind of hard and not really that nice. So now looking at the back of the DTS, I think this may be actually my favorite angle of this car. I really like the back end. It's pretty simple looking, but I do like the uh, uh, squared off edges on the top and the sides. It just looks nice. Um, of course, we have our nice LED tail lights, which I'm happy to see. Uh, of course, Cadillac introduced LED tail lights on their DeVille sedan, so I'm glad that they carried it over to this car. It looks pretty nice. Um, 
I do wish, however, that there was like maybe a handle or some way to open up the trunk from the outside of the car, but um, unfortunately they did, they did not add that. It gives it a cleaner look, but if we would have had that, would have been nice and practical. Now I also like how they added a quad exhaust here in the back of the car. Uh, definitely just a nice look. I don't like it when automakers try and hide the exhaust tips or give them fake ones, but these are real and they look really nice on this car. They do also have a nice strip of chrome here and they added the DTS uh, emblem there for us to see what kind of car this is. And they of course have the North Star V8 badge on the back as well to show off that this has a North Star engine. So next, taking a look at the trunk of the DTS, it uh, pops open nicely when I use the key fob there. Uh, it's a relatively big trunk, which is pretty nice to see. It has about 18.8 .8 cubic feet of space of room in there. Uh, so you can fit, you know, pretty big suitcases in there. It's a really nice size. Uh, you have, of course, a spare tire underneath the floor mat there. Uh, you have different cubbies on each side of the trunk. So a little bit of nice extra space there. Um, however, of course, to my disappointment, no trunk pull down. So this car, unfortunately, does not have that, uh, which is a shame, but I won't get into that. It's not a huge deal, but um, otherwise, it is a decent sized trunk. Definitely a good amount of space for this car. All right, let's check underneath the hood of the DTS and see what we can find. So this hood is a lot smaller than uh, the previous cars in the channel. So I can easily lift it up with one hand and I could not do that in the last videos. So it's kind of funny. Uh, that hood's really easy enough for anyone to open, which is great. So anyways, we have our North Star 32 valve V8 engine under here. This is producing here about 275 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. So a good amount of power definitely for a normal sedan, but being a limousine that's going to need a lot of extra oomph to move down the road. So hopefully it's enough, but we'll uh, check that out later in the drive. But um, at this point, uh, the North Star really didn't have many problems, at least not that I've heard of. Um, you know, the early, nine, late 90s North Stars, maybe even some of the early 2000s had, you know, some serious problems. Uh, blowing head gaskets or whatever, but uh, supposedly that was all fixed by this point, well, even well before this, so, which is a good thing. So that makes it means it's really a reliable engine, uh, really economical. I think this car gets about 23 miles per gallon on the highway at best, which is pretty good for a limousine. Definitely improvement over the 96 limousine, although I like the LT1 engine, but this probably does at least get better fuel mileage, and I'm happy to see the North Star engine in this car. All right, well now let's see if we can get a good sound out of the quad exhaust tips. All right, so I thought I'd show you guys real quick the uh, key fob to the DTS. Uh, pretty simple, it is plastic, unfortunately. It would have been nice to have leather, but uh, they didn't add that to their key fobs at this point. Cadillac didn't do that. But uh, pretty simple, you have lock, unlock, you have your uh, auto start button there. This car does have auto start, which is nice. Panic button, and of course you can uh, uh, open your trunk from here. On the other side, just a nice uh, looking Cadillac emblem. It does feel nice to the touch, I do like it. Um, it is moderately weighty, so it's not a bad key fob. Definitely works. Um, pretty practical, easy to use. All right, now that we've taken a good look at the exterior of the DTS limousine, let's see what it's like inside. So looking inside of the DTS, we have a pretty nice interior. There's a good amount of leather and wood on the doors and the seats look nice and look very comfortable. Um, however, there's a good amount of plastic in here. Uh, definitely uh, could see some improvement compared to uh, um, modern cars. This uh, Cadillac has definitely gone a long way in terms of their style on the inside and their materials they use. I mean, this looks fairly bland, but I mean, it's still a rather nice looking interior uh, for what it is. Um, now let me try getting in the seat and let's see how comfortable it is. Alright, definitely not bad. Um, I kind of actually expected these seats to be a lot harder uh, 
than they actually were, but really they still have a lot of uh, uh, nice soft leather and nice padding underneath them that I actually cush and sit and feel like I'm falling into the seat, kind of like in the uh, older Cadillacs. So uh, a lot like, uh, it's, it's unlike a lot of the more modern Cadillacs where the seats are really tough now and hard and um, some are softer than others, but this is still a very comfortable seat. There's nice bolstering here that really holds me into place. I, I just feel like I'm really comfortable in this seat. Um, now as far as adjustability, I do have some controls to my left here, which I can of course adjust the seat in just about any way I want. I have lumbar controls, which is nice. The headrest does move up and down, but I haven't been able to find any sort of a tilt function, so I can't really move forward or backwards, which is a shame. Um, otherwise, I'm very comfortable here, definitely like it. Now taking a closer look at the door panel here, I have some controls, I have of course my regular window switches. All four windows here are automatic down, which is nice. Only the driver and passenger window, front windows are automatic up as well. I have mirror controls, they do not automatically fold in unfortunately. Um, window locks, door locks, all that normal stuff. Um, there is some nice leather here uh, on the side of the door as well as on the grab handle and uh, where I'd rest my arm. However, most of the rest of it is kind of harder plastic. Uh, definitely not the nicest stuff, but what actually did surprise me, however, is that there is felt inside of the uh, compartment there to hold stuff. There's a nice soft lining in there instead of the hard plastic you get in about just about every other car. So that was actually a pretty nice surprise. I don't know why Cadillac got rid of that on the uh, XTS video. I, they didn't have any sort of felt inside of the uh, uh, door cubby there, but that's okay. There is some nice wood. I do like the color of that wood. Um, that may be fake. I honestly don't really know. It's kind of a harder sounding plastic or wood, whatever it is, but you do get a metal door handle, which is nice, as well as a nice uh, metal door lock. So relatively nice materials. Uh, could be better. Um, in front of me, of course, I have my steering wheel here. This car does come with Bluetooth, which was actually a nice surprise. I didn't expect it to have Bluetooth, but you can pair several devices to the, to the car. Relatively easy to do. I have radio controls on my right, and then on my left, I can control my cruise control, turn it on or off, um, increase my speed, lower my speed. Um, I also have volume controls on the back on the right side of the steering wheel. Pretty nice. Um, the, the wheel does move up and down, but it's not telescoping. Um, it doesn't move automatically, unfortunately. Um, that's probably only on the higher trim DTS, DTSs. This one does not have that. Um, other than my wiper controls on the left, I do have my gear selector here. It's just a normal looking stock. There's a little bit of metal on the end, which is nice. I can turn off my traction control there if I wanted to. Nothing too special, but it's all easy to reach, easy to use. And then up here on the left, on the dashboard, I have my controls for my driver information center here. I have a little screen in the speedometer there that changes. And I can look at different things such as my average fuel economy, my instant fuel economy, uh, trip A, trip B. Um, kind of the stuff you'd expect to see, nothing too special. Um, but there are some nice uh, arrow buttons there so I can move up or down between the different uh, settings there that I can see so I don't have to scroll through the whole list if I missed the setting that I want to look at. I can just move my arrows up and down. So a lot of different things. Um, of course, you can change the settings of the car when you want the doors to lock or unlock, and park and drive, whatever you want to do. So you do have analog gauges in front of me. Um, they look fairly nice, has some chrome on them. Um, I do, however, like the startup display that they show. When I start up the car, it looks really cool at nighttime. All the gauges do this really cool looking sweep motion, so it looks really nice. And another neat little quirk with the driver information center, it actually, when it gives you a warning such as like a low tire pressure reading, it actually flashes in and out nice and smoothly. It's not like a quick flash and it turns immediately off. It's a slower motion and I really like how that looks. Kind of makes it look a little bit more luxurious. All right, and then to the right of me, of course, we have all my radio controls. We have a little screen there. Uh, we can see all my presets to the radio. Um, there isn't really much things you can change with this. It doesn't have navigation, obviously, which it would have had if this is a higher-end DTS, but no navigation screen here, unfortunately. Um, but you do have a nice clock here at the top, which I really like. It's just a regular-looking clock. It's not digital, so it's a little bit more special-looking. Um, a couple neat quirks with this. First of all, the Cadillac script is written underneath the clock there, so it's kind of fancy. And you also have the DTS badge located right under the clock too, and that's the only place on the interior that I've been able to find the DTS badge. So the badging really doesn't go too far in this car, which I like. It's more subtle. Um, it doesn't really scream in your face that this is a DTS, so I think that's kind of nice that they did that. 
Um, otherwise, this clock looks really cool at nighttime. When it's obviously dark out, the light, headlights come on, interior lights come on. Uh, this clock has a nice glow to it, you know, each individual hand of the clock lights up as well as the uh, uh, indicators around the hands so you can see what time it is at night. And another little quirk with the clocks, when you have the car turned on, the time shows not only on that clock but also on the radio as well. However, if you only want to look at the time on the regular clock, you can turn off the radio clock by going into the settings and then it just shows a blank screen when you turn the uh, radio off. So it's kind of fancy and kind of a neat quirk that you can actually turn off that clock so you only have to look at the regular clock to know what time it is. And then just below the radio we have our climate controls here. The nice thing is it has dual climate control so the driver and the passenger can set their own temperature. So that's a nice feature to have. What does look kind of cool is when you close these vents it actually looks really cool. Just like a nice door just closing the entire vent instead of still having the vent open. So it's kind of a different little look there. And then above me I have just regular visors, of course each side has a mirror on it and of course lights, but you can't adjust the lights unfortunately, that's the one thing that uh, I would have liked to have had. But the other nice thing is, you do have a second visor here, so if you want, if you're going around bends, maybe the sun's coming through the driver window as well as the windshield ahead of you, you can move this visor over to cover this window and then pull that other one, that second visor down to block the windshield as well. And of course we have our mirror here. And unfortunately this car is missing the garage home link, so there are no buttons here to open your garage. However, we do have some nice lights up here, you can turn them on and off with that button. And then further above that, on the roof, are controls for the rear climate control. So you can turn that on or off, you can make it blow hot or cold air, so that's a pretty easy way to be able to do that. Otherwise, as far as storage goes, there's actually a good amount. Besides the uh, door compartments that I already mentioned before, we have, of course, a fairly large center armrest here, which has a big pocket in there. And then beneath that, there's actually another compartment which you can put more things in. Uh, then, of course, you have cup holders which kind of pop out in the seat. This is very, very similar to what was in like the earlier DeVilles before this DTS. Um, a lot of DeVilles had a very similar kind of compartment to this, maybe even exactly the same. Otherwise, we have our glove compartment over there, which is nice, so a good amount of storage for a, a big passenger car. And the neat thing is, the center armrest does actually move up, which turns into another seat. So this is actually a nine passenger car. It can really haul a lot of people when you have a limousine. Now something interesting that we actually find inside of the glove box is the valet button. And this is something you'd use when you have a valet or someone else drive your car for you. Uh, this makes some features unavailable, such as the trunk or even the uh, garage home link buttons. Um, of course, this car doesn't have that, but it would make buttons like those unaccessible to the valet so they can't steal something from you. And something else that we also find inside of the glove box is the owner's manual. Um, it isn't too special. It comes in a nice leather case which does feel really nice to the touch. Um, inside we of course just have a regular looking owner's manual. Uh, nothing too special. I do think that older Cadillac owner's manuals were a little bit nicer than this. They actually were a leather bound book. Um, especially in the 90s actually. That's when they were pretty nice. Luckily, it's not a huge deal, not something that we use that often. But what is cool, this case does stay shut. It looks like, or feels like, from a magnet. Um, it kind of has a nice uh, opening and close to it. So that's kind of a nice little feature to have on the case of the owner's manual. Now something that I really didn't expect on this car, which is a nice attention to detail, is that the Cadillac script is on all the door sills in this car. Even the middle row has the Cadillac script written kind of in plastic but it's written there even in the middle row as well as the back row I usually don't see that I feel like most cars just have it in the front front doors and wouldn't even do it in the back and I'm sur especially surprised it's in the second row as well all right now we've taken a tour of the front seats let's go back a row and see what it's like there oh yeah so this door opens up really wide so it's really easy to get in but then of course it's very hard to reach that handle, so better hope that you don't open the door that far or you have someone else to close the door for you. But this is in some ways the nicest seat in the whole car, but also the worst. Um, let me explain. There's a ton of legroom back here. I mean, I can really stretch out my legs. This seat is in my driver's position. Uh, there's plenty of room back here. Honestly, it seems like there's even more room back here than there is in the front seat. Um, the seat is just as comfortable as the front. You do actually get headrests here, which is a pleasant surprise. 
Uh, the 96 Fleetwood limousine I showed you guys did not have headrests in the second row, and that just made it a lot more uncomfortable because you couldn't rest your head on anything. It was just not really that comfortable. Um, but otherwise, I am a little bit disappointed with the quality in the second row. The door panel is not nearly as nice as the ones you get in the front seats. Uh, first of all, there's a lot less leather on this door. Uh, where leather would be, it's actually plastic. You still do get leather on the grab handle and around the ashtray, which is on the door. Otherwise, it's not that nice. The rest of it's just plastic. It's also kind of loose. It really doesn't seem to be on there very well. Uh, the door seems to shake a little bit just when I move the top of the door, uh, the plastic. So it's really a little bit disappointing. Now something that is really cool with the middle seat here is that I do have my regular climate controls here where I can change the temperature, the fan speed, or the direction of the air that's coming out uh, through the vents. Um, that's actually kind of a neat feature that they have that still because that technically means that this car has quad climate control. Both the front driver and the passenger have control of their own temperature. The middle row has their own temperature and the rear has their own temperature as well. So it's kind of neat that there are so many different ways to change the temperature in this vehicle for all the occupants in it. Now possibly the biggest surprise I actually had with this entire car is that this the second row windows actually move up and down. There are window switches on both of these back doors so the people back here can actually control if their window goes up or down. However, the strange thing is, there are only four window switches up for the front for the driver. So I guess they don't have any way to actually control if these windows move up or down, which is really strange. And I'm kind of surprised that they even had these windows move down. It seems on most limousines, they don't bother designing these windows to go up or down, most likely because either the window's too big for the motor to handle, or maybe it takes more money to develop those mechanics. But I'm pleasantly surprised to see that these windows do move up and down. These seats are still very soft, very comfortable. Um, this is a pretty good place to be. I just wish that both of these rear doors had better quality with them. But still, I'd be happy sitting back here on a longer road trip because I can stretch out my legs. Let's move back into the row and see what it's like in the third row. Alright. Well. Being in the third row, I uh, definitely feel even happier. I, uh, uh, fortunately, the, the door is back to normal. We have actual leather on the side instead of just all this plastic. Um, so I assume that that's because this door is the one that came with the DTS from the factory, not some other door that was probably made by SNS when they made the car. Um, so they had to they actually had Cadillac standards here. So you do have another pocket here in the door for whatever you want. It's still felt lined. So that's nice to see. Uh, in front of me, we have our vents for cool air that we get from the front seat up there. We also get some vents underneath the second row seats for our heat. So it's really nice to see all that. So we actually have uh, cool or warm air if we need it back here. Um, and this is kind of interesting. I've never seen this in any other car. The second row seat on the back of it, there's obviously tissues coming out of there, that hole. Um, there's actually a tissue box underneath the leather there. You can actually rip up the Velcro on the bottom. You can put a new box in there, replace the box, whatever. Uh, so there's an actual tissue box in there. So you can kind of see that this car is intended more for uh, uh, funerals. Um, funeral homes are most likely to buy cars like this. So obviously that's why you'd want to have tissues here in this car. But there are some disappointments with the third row as well. Um, this seat doesn't have any center armrest, which is really strange because the DTS from the factory would have had a center armrest in the back seat. So SNS must have replaced this seat with some other one. I don't know why, it looks much like a DTS seat, but it just doesn't have the center armrest. And the strange thing is, then you don't have a center pass-through to the trunk. It looks like there was actually a hole in the trunk intended for a center pass-through, but they covered it up for this car, and I really find that strange. I don't know why you'd remove that and get rid of the regular seat back here. But one of the nice things you get back here you do also get a clothes hanger here in the side. I do have a light up here that I can turn on or off with the push of a button. Other than map holders on these seats, there really isn't anything else special in the back row. Um, maybe a little bit less leg room, but still definitely enough to make me happy back here. All right, now that we've taken a tour of the exterior and the interior of the DTS limousine, let's go ahead and take it for a drive.
pretty exciting. It's definitely fun driving a limousine, that's for sure. See how the thing is, uh, pretty much right off the bat when you first start driving this car, especially when you go around turns, um, you really realize what the biggest disadvantage is of a limousine, and that's definitely its turning radius. I mean, it's absolutely awful. It's, it's, at least this car is. Um, honestly, I don't remember the uh, 96 limousine being this bad. I don't know if this car, if the radius is just worse for some reason, or if it's just been, it's been a while since I've driven that car. So I guess that I haven't been used to driving a uh, limousine. So it's just kind of a shocker once you realize just how bad the turning radius is, unfortunately. Other than that, it really does seem like, much like a normal car, which might sound uh, kind of strange to many of you. You probably think, oh no, a limousine would probably be really, really difficult to drive. But honestly, it's really not. I mean, I'm, I, I've, I've been used to driving big cars, but I mean, Really, driving down the road, you actually forget you're driving a limousine. Um, even, you know, when making turns, oftentimes it doesn't feel that strange. Um, you get used to it surprisingly quick. This really has an extremely surprising, really nice ride. Um, most bumps you hardly feel. Uh, on the highway, it feels very, very smooth. It's really surprising. Um, I expect it to be a lot harsher just being a limousine. Um, but it does have extra weight to it, so that kind of makes it more like uh, Cadillacs of old. So definitely uh, not too bad. I really, really do like the ride of this car. And so far, it really doesn't seem like there's any struggle from the engine. I mean, right now, just accelerating from a near stop, uh, going over the railroad tracks there, it really feels like a normal car. I think the North Star has plenty of power. We'll, uh, we'll do some harder accelerations later, but so far, it really does seem to fit this car well. Um, it's relatively easy to do normal kind of driving with this car. Yeah. Going around turns like that, the turning radius doesn't feel too bad. It's still pretty noticeable though. It would be cool if this had like four wheel steering or something like that. I bet that would make a huge difference in the turning radius of this car. It seems like that's exactly what it could, <laughs> it could use. <laughs> but yeah, I love these seats really. I, um, really feel very comfortable in them. They don't have any sort of massaging function. It's not heated or cooled, unfortunately. Um, but it's still, for what it is, it's a great seat. Compared to the 96 Fleetwood, this really isn't all that bad. I mean, they did make a lot of improvements. Honestly, the ride is better. Uh, the technology is a little bit better. The seats, I think, are better. The 96 seats just weren't really that form-fitting to your body. You kind of slid around a little bit more. Um, they have the headrests in this car. Uh, unfortunately, still no armrest in either the second or third row. This, this, the, the quality of these seats could have been better. I do think, however, that overall, honestly, I'm not really uh, impressed by this interior. Um, I think the 96 may have been even a little bit better. Uh, the doors in the second row were much better than the 96. Um, most of this car is just hard plastic. The plastic even seemed nicer than the 96. Um, although some of this is softer on the dashboard, like this plastic's like kind of a little soft to the touch. It's still not quite where I'd expect it to be. But if I was choosing between those two limousines, honestly, I'd probably still choose this one. I think the 96 looks a lot better. It's a lot classier. Uh, the chrome is nicer. I like the chrome beneath the doors. Um, but I'd still probably choose this one. It's more practical. Um, easier to live with as Bluetooth. That's a huge plus to me, at least. Um, it's really... A decent car to have and honestly I think more people should consider just owning a limousine I mean they make great um, family cars or road trip cars I mean we we always take limousines on road trips um, they're really really good for that Zero to 60 and we'll see how it does. Alright, starting to stand still. It's 40, 50, there's 60. That was actually pretty good. Not gonna lie, that was not bad. Wow. Yeah, that was
was pretty good. It, honestly, it was probably I didn't I didn't count it, but it's not exactly impressive. But for a big limousine, I mean that's pretty impressive. I'd kind of expect that acceleration just from a regular big sedan. I mean this is stretched at least 20 inches. Yeah, the, I gotta give the North Star a lot of credit. It's really a nice engine as far as power goes. It gives you pretty much everything you need. This seems just kind of like more of a comfort car. Um, the seats are much softer. Um, the steering isn't as precise. The ride is much smoother. But it is a lot further back in terms of technology goes. Um, this really is lacking a lot of stuff. Um, it would be nice if this had like the navigation or something like that. That would be nice to see. Um, however, it's still a good car. Um, I'm sure this compares well to the regular DTS. It would be nice to see to uh, review one of those. I haven't driven one before. Um, I'd imagine it's pretty similar to this. Um, it would be neat to see a platinum trim, maybe to get to uh, review one of those. But um, let me let me know what you guys think of this. Do you, do you like seeing limousines, this kind of stuff on the channel? Uh, do you prefer regular cars? I mean, I'm happy to bring both. Um, I may even still bring both. I uh, enjoy these kind of cars myself, so. Uh, I have fun driving them. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and to come back again soon for more car reviews. Thank you. It gives it a nice sound too, so nice that they added a quad exhaust that uh, is actually... So it's nice that they added a quad. So I thought I'd show you guys the uh, key fob to the DTS real quick. Oh, say hello to Mittens. <laughs> hi kitty, hi! You gonna help me make my video? Yeah. That guy was looking at the car. <laughs> See, everyone just looks at limousines. It's so strange. I mean, it's just one of those things that people just can't get enough of for some reason. I guess it is, it is a rare thing to see.